Right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the perfection of Justin Rose's goal. It is so good. It's it? good. He's, he's really, really good. I think he's good. I think he's going to, I mean, you know, he's had a great season the last few seasons, but I think he's really going to step up his game this year. Uh, he seems to have been, he seems to have sharpened every area up. His driving's mm. amazing. Uh, Hopefully, going to get a what's in the bag through with him today as well. So stay tuned for that, guys. Well, not with him. That's going to say. I think he might still That's be in the new Orleans. <laughs> so I'm going to do a what's in the bag on my channel. All the way rushing for his private jet last night. <laughs> got to get, got to get there. I've got to get there. It's a shame he's just missed the Monday night golf show. He lands at nine, but we just couldn't wait. You know, we need to get it done. So we've got an Uber picking him up. It's all right. <laughs> uh, right, question time. We jumped on Pete's Facebook now, guys. As well, Pete has got a new Facebook page. Finally. Yeah, so you can like me, which is which is a new one. <laughs> you might not want to, but you can like it. Um, so yeah, he's had his always had his person. I've got my person and my page. Uh, you might see me using my page a lot more now. My person might die, unfortunately. <laughs> wow, I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm also going to sacrifice my person uh, and then put me on my page. Uh, I think it just gives us a few more options on yes. what we can actually post out there. So. Your Rick Shields golf with your person, Rick Shields dash golf. Yeah, and I'm just Rick Shields my page. Yeah, and I'm Peter Finch dash golf for my person, and then Peter Finch golf for my page, uh, without the dash. Probably should separate it a little bit more, Maybe really. Just on the golf. Yeah, so possibly. yeah, go <laughs> check the pages out, guys, because like I say, we, it just gives us more options. I mean, stuff like this, when we put it on the page, everything gets in order of most liked, so we mm. don't miss any liked ones. Right. So this is on the this is on your person actually. <laughs> after all that, mm -hmm. uh, right? Question time. Question time. Question <clears> time. <throat> Let's start off with um, where was the first one again? Right. Uh, Alex Maguire. What is your favourite hole in the world? Hashtag Monday Night Golf Show. It's actually nice to see it on the Monday, by the way. Not on a Wednesday. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Uh, this had 13 likes, a quite a popular question. Uh, what is your favourite hole in the world? Um, are we going to do one that we've played? Yeah, let's. you've got to do one we've played, yeah. Got to do okay, one, that one that we have played, right. For me, even though I didn't actually play it great, you know, do you know what I'm going to say already? Well, I know what I'm going to say. I reckon it might be the same one. Cause it was, did you play it really well? I played it well. Did you hit the green in two? I did hit the green yeah. too. So Trump International, 18th <laughs> hole. It is just phenomenal. We must, um, we must have a picture somewhere. Believable. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll throw a picture up on screen. Absolutely amazing. Uh, oh, seriously. How far is it? Uh, over 600 yards, par five, and the elevation off the tee. You are at the highest point, I believe, in Scotland. There's no facts about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's not true. But you are really high up on the tee. The views are absolutely amazing, and you're playing down to a hole that looks, that looks, I promise you, a full country difference. It's, it looks so far away, it's unreal. It, it, I think from the elevation, I don't know if they've even factored that elevation just, in. Honestly, you, that is, is a course you have to play to believe, and that hole is... It's just un it is just unbelievable. It's really good. And yeah, the fact I knocked it on too. So. Yeah, you played it really well, actually. Uh, but yeah, that, I think that's the best hole that we've that I, I've, we've ever played without yeah. question. And we, we've got to get back up to Trump International this well, year. It's best course I've played. And we are going to well. take our camera and we're going to force <laughs> their hand. We will film at Trump International. Donald, if you're watching, <laughs> <laughs> friend of the show. Yeah. <laughs> no, oh, you got a tweet. You got a letter from him. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, to the wrong Peter Finch. So Who Peter Finch is actually the editor of Golf Digest and got. A lovely letter from Donald Trump. Unfortunately, it was the wrong Peter Finch. I'm so annoyed. He, he, did send, he sent it back to you, though, didn't he? No, well, the, the editor of Golf Digest sent it on to me, yeah. and then I sent it back to Donald Trump. And no, it was back to me. No. Awkward. Uh, Chris Swanson. Oh, um, three to four foot putts, straight and firm, or play the break? Uh, hashtag Monday Night Golf Show. Hashtag keep up the good work. Great. Second hashtag. Oh, thank you very much. I, I daren't click on that, that second hashtag because God knows what we're going to find with that. <laughs> um, right. Firm and straight. Uh, I'd love to say firm and straight, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm always scared about the putt coming back. Um, um, you, you might have seen the Emirates Golf Course vlog. I did not go firm and straight and I should have gone firm and straight and therefore the outcome was inevitable. Um, firm and straight, I, I believe it is potentially the, the the most beneficial way of doing it first off you don't encounter mm. any undulations as you get closer to the hole the imperfections around the hole can start to affect the roll of the ball so dimples spike marks etc can start to if the ball's going in too slow there can be deflections which is not going to suit your shot i'd, I'd say definitely depends de on the pause, yeah i mean definitely when i was younger and when i'm confident straight and firm 
but at the moment, every single inch of break, every single centimetre of break is played. As, we, as we're getting a bit more old and nervous, <laughs> we started to play the break. But yeah, firm and straight is absolutely, if you're putting confidently, bang. You saw that with Justin Rose at the 18th hole at the Zurich uh, Open. He just nailed it in. And he, I mean, he was like 20 foot away, but he nailed it in. Mm -hmm. I think you've got to be confident on these on those short puts. Um, I think confidence is, is going to override a lot of the actual stroke itself as well. Uh, right, let's roll down. Um, this is quite an interesting one. <laughs> William Tucker. I, I, I love I love what you're saying here, William. Uh, do you want to ask it, Pete? Yeah, this, this is one of those things when... <laughs> Rick, you are tall at six foot four with long arms. It's the first I've heard that I'm six foot four, but hey. I, I was going to say, if, if you're six foot four, I'm, I'm going to have to remeasure myself again. <laughs> I'm happy about but, that. Thanks, William. Appreciate what, that. What do you see? I'm actually going to like that comment right now. <laughs> 20 likes, 21, 21 likes, he's just had another like. So if you've just seen that, you've just been liked, because that comment's awesome. Rick, you're a six foot four with long arms. What do you see as the reason, oh, let's go downhill for you a bit now. What do you see as the reason that you do not hit your driver up there with Andy, Piers and Peter? Ouch. So we did um, a bit of collaboration Ouch. work with Andy and Piers for me and my golf, and yeah, they were smashing it out there as well. They were. Uh, they've got incredibly long levers. I mean, quite frankly, their strength, strength overpowers me. <laughs> quite easily I mean, you know you guys are all hitting the gym hard you're all working hard on your fitness you're all working hard on your power um, I've not so much <laughs> let's be honest <laughs> I've been working great in the, you, in you the mean, fast mean, food places you've you you encouraged us you've encouraged us to be fair um, all, all your energy has been spent encouraging us I'm, I'm, I would say I'm a long hitter of the golf ball I wouldn't say I'm the longest uh, I'm not six foot four and I've not got long arms I'm not because okay. apparently your arm span is the same length as you. Is that right? That that is supposed to be six foot. I'm six foot. That's supposed to be six foot. Six foot. I'm just under six foot. <laughs> Whatever. Um, <laughs> how many inches under six foot? Like h half an inch. <laughs> oh, it's true. I'm half an inch. I just wear really flat soles, so people always look taller than me in real life. Uh, this is the first, when, when we had the golf show this week and a few people popped up to us and say hi we really appreciate that one of the things was you're not taller in real life I'm, <laughs> I didn't realise I was well, they, someone said I was when, slimmer in real life I was quite happy about that I was when, like really? When, what are you looking? when William meets you he's going to be the first person who goes you're a lot shorter in real life <laughs> well, you're six foot four <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what I'll tell you what then William you're going to prompt a video I'm going to do a longest drive video today uh, and I'll see how far I can hit it wow do I get, because me and my golf guys only got five shots. Pete got like 25 shots. That was for a specific reason though. All right, I'll do 10 drives. No, I'll do, shall I do five? Same as me and my golf. I'll do five drives and we'll see how far. I've got to beat Andy's 3-3-3, three, 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 Piers is 3-3-7 three, three, and your 3-5-8. I doubt it. I normally hit it about 305. So I, I, if you're going to watch this video, I may be jumping. Uh, so, but yeah, great question, William. It, it, I, for me, it's just physical strength. I can't generate as much club head speed as these guys at the moment, but that will change. Uh, right, guys, whenever we see a pro swing being analyzed, including by yourselves, we often see them getting into incorrect positions. Furic being a good example. So you guys did Furic mm -hmm. last week. Um, get they make it work for them. But if they weren't famous pros and they went to see a teacher, is it likely the teacher would try and change these faults? My question is, how do we amateurs know what our unique idiosyncrasies are? Especially... <laughs> it's all I'm here for anymore, the correction. <laughs> Especially if we're always being told to hit certain positions that are considered... Optimal. optimal. <laughs> I could get that. Optimal. I need to do the brackets. Uh, 18 likes. Great question, Joseph. Yeah, really good question. Um, right. This is this is a great... Mm. I, I love this question. I absolutely adore... I think this question is amazing. Um, so, if some of these pros weren't famous and they went to see a teacher, would the teacher correct these faults? Um, I remember this from a training exercise that we did down at the, the PGA. I'm not sure if Pete was actually with me at this point, but we were down at the PGA. And um, Fury, uh, we were talking about faults, finding, etc., etc. And Jim Fury's swing got popped up on screen. And the, the, everyone went in the room kind of went silent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fault finding we were doing. And the, the lecturer said, right, all right, have a look through his swing. I'm going to give you five minutes, and I want you to list off everything that you would change 
was the word change in his golf swing. So, video got played and from different angles, etc., etc., and the and this video stopped and everyone got the pen, <laughs> writing things down. I'm, I, I must have. I was looking around the room, going, "What is everybody mm. writing?" <laughs> Everyone's writing and writing and writing and writing. And writing and I'm thinking, "Oh God, okay." Um, let me have a think about this, right? Well, if I was teaching Jim, if I was teaching Jim right now, and he came in and had a lesson with myself. He's a friend of the show, so. Well, obviously. Came and sat down and said, Rick, you know, I want to work on my game and I want to get better. I'd like to think <laughs> <laughs> that the questions that I would ask him would find out where he was at in the world. If I didn't know who he was, if he came masked, I would be asking questions about what he would actually want to improve in his mm. golf game, what I would want to improve. What areas of his game does he actually want to get better at? Does he want to hit the ball further, less to the right, less to the left, sharp and be short game, hit the ball higher, lower, whatever he would want to do, we would tailor that session around him. I would never in a million years <laughs> change gym swing or a golf swing that has produced millions, tens, maybe even hundreds <laughs> of million dollars so, so, long story short, so everyone's writing the things down, everything, and I'm, I'm writing, I just wrote down, how much have you, has Jim earned? <laughs> how much money has he earned? How many tour events has he won? And the, and the lecturer said, right guys, okay, let, let's hear what you're thinking. And everyone's shouting, oh, I changed this, I changed his backswing, it's too steep, it's this, it's that. He's got, he's too close to the ball, he's too far away, he's too, these are too bent. And I was thinking, oh my God. So I, 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 mean, I casually put my arm up. And I'm not saying, you know, this wasn't everyone, it was just a slight few. I kind of just asked the question, I said, well, how many tour events has he won and how much money has he won? And it was like, you have to tailor it around the individual. Yeah, it, it, you know, we wouldn't change. If he came in here, we wouldn't change what he's, what he's doing. If you, if you look at analysed swings, and we don't, we don't particularly analyse golf swings. We will showcase golf swings and we will show what they are doing very well mm -hmm. and how it works for them. We're never changing their golf swings. So these guys are always they're just one the, the day before. We're not going to change the golf swings. <laughs> no, I, it's tricky because knowing specifically on the point, I mean, I can't really argue with anything kind of Rick said there, but when talking about idiosyncrasies within the swing, what you've got to... Show what, off. <laughs> got that word in a few more times. <laughs> what you've actually got to analyse, and this is if you are going to go for a lesson, this is what you have to work on with your pro you have to find out which idiosyncrasies within your swing are actually causing a problem. That are actually causing a problem. Because if you're taking it up massively, say, steep, if we use Jim Furyk as an example and people were swinging some aspects of Jim Furyk's swing, if you were swinging the club up massively steep on the backswing, but then you were coming massively steep on the downswing, changing the backswing could iron out that steepness. But if you'll do something like Jim, taking it up very, very steep, but then dropping it back into a great position coming down, the first idiosyncrasy, the backswing, you don't need to change because it's not affecting the overall result at impact, which is what really matters Correct. effectively. Correct. So idiosyncrasies within the swing only need to be ironed out if they're causing a problem. If they're not causing a problem, then you don't need to iron them out. But you need to work with a good pro to figure out that. A lot of times I'll see faults in swings, but I will never change them because it is it is complementing another issue in the golf swing. I call, always call them characteristics. So every player can hit a, a straight shot. We could, we could at the moment hit a straight shot with a, a ridiculous golf swing. Mm. But if we have if we have issues, characteristics that are uh, complementing other characteristics, that ball can go straight. You've got to bear in mind as well, these guys play and practice every single day. Mm. And they've done that for years and years and years and years. I reckon for, for most amateur golfers, they don't have that time to practice. They don't have that time to be that good. So to condense those idiosyncrasies, <laughs> to condense those down <laughs> like Monday morning language school <laughs> <laughs> to condense those down and to actually get a result that's going to be more beneficial for you on a very on a weekly basis is what is essential mm. so we, we would never teach let's say a Jim Fury swing as much you couldn't but on the same token if someone came in with a Jim Fury swing we would look at what he's doing in his golf swing or in his shots what's actually happening at impact using the launch monsters and stuff that we use down here and then taking it from there. But yeah, it's a tough one, Stephen. It's a great, unbelievably great question. Great question yeah. um, 
but you need to find out what your characteristics are and what are causing your issues and what you want to address. Don't then go, if, if, if it's hard, isn't it? You know, I'm not saying that every, every pro will do this, but then think about the terms and the logic that the pro is doing to change those actions. Mm. I'll always justify every change. We always we talk, talk about justification. If, the, the, if we ever make a change in the golf swing, it's got to be justified. We explain it, mm. go through it in, in detail to know that that movement is going to make you better. That's the whole idea of it. Yeah. Do you agree? It's what will make you better, not just make you look. Better. Absolutely, make you hit the ball better. Yeah. Uh, right, let's go one more. Well, anyway, we, co we couldn't find any, any valuable ones. We've got one that we've answered that probably shouldn't have. Uh, that's, stay tuned to right at the end of the video of that. Um, anyway, guys, thanks very much as always for your questions. Some very interesting ones. We appreciate all the feedback that you give us. Uh, thanks for watching all the videos. We appreciate it. Thanks for subscribing. If you've not already, please do. Uh, go and check out uh, things you've got to do right now. Comment down below. Let us know what you. What was the question we asked everybody? It was a good one. Check out earlier on the show. Uh, also, subscribe to myself and to Pete. Uh, go and check out the Golf Monthly videos that we did uh, on their channel. Um, I'm also hopefully doing some work with uh, Carly Booth this week. Uh, maybe Pete, we'll see how we can sync things up. Uh, Carly Booth, uh, European tour player, the ladies European tour player. If you've got any questions for Carly, yes. please do throw them in the mix. Uh, fantastic player, and check her out on Instagram and Facebook, Twitter as well. Um, and that's it. We've got a match lined up with me and my golf this month, next month, May. There's so much. We might be going to America, potentially. Uh, Fingers there's, crossed. There's so much. I mean, like I said, just subscribe to both channels and keep an eye out because there's so... I'm there's, sure we'll tell you if anything's uh, going to go on. The, the, there's so much potentially going on in May. I mean, April's been crazy, but May is potentially going to be nuts. Really. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate what you do, uh, and we shall see you next week on the Monday Night Golf Show on Pete Finch Channel. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you soon. <laughs> right, last one. We found a good one. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's a great one. Uh, <laughs> Carl Vincent. <laughs> Carl Vincent. Um, Pete Finch Golf. It's unfair that Rickshaw's golf. Answers all the awkward questions. I would believe, yeah, I would I'd be very true on that. Yeah, but it's your own fault. You put yourself <laughs> in these situations. <laughs> so, Pete, if you were playing with Blair, mm -hmm. 18th hole, mm. you would have a short one left for the win. Okay. Would you try and gently stroke it in the front? <laughs>